The greatest need in the life of a Christian is to maintain a soft heart. Because when our heart becomes hardened, it stops God's blessing. When we read Ezekiel chapter 36 and Jeremiah chapter 31, it's the promise of a new covenant that God was going to give us a new heart of flesh and remove a hard, stony heart. A soft heart is really the only kind of heart that God can really bring blessing to. Anywhere in God's Word where people harden their hearts, it brought God's displeasure or even judgment. God can't bless a hardened heart, a closed heart, a bitter heart. You know, when we read Job chapter 9, verse 4, the question is asked, Who hath hardened himself against him, against God, and prospered? Read Job 9, verse 4. To harden one's self against people or circumstances is to harden one's self against the one who may be allowed it, God. God does allow circumstances to develop us. But remember, whenever we're hurt, there is wonderful grace available. Let's really memorize Hebrews 4.16. that says this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And then reading from 1 Corinthians 10.13, listen to what it says about grace. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. This is really true grace. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Well, let's describe a hardened heart. It is to be greatly offended. It's to close our heart. It's to put people out of our life. To be bitter, unforgiving. This destroys relationships and marriage. A hard heart is a strong heart with plenty of fight and resistance. We want a soft heart. Well, a hardened heart is because someone was hurt or terribly offended. Then the heart closes and cannot be reasoned with. A hardened heart becomes obstinate, unreasonable, unyielding. A hardened heart stops faith. It causes joy to leave. Remember, faith works by love. It is activated by love in a soft heart. Read Galatians 5, 6. Remember when Pharaoh hardened his heart over and over? This brought God's judgment. Proud people harden their hearts. Romans 12, 3 warns, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Well, in Hebrews 3 verse 8 and also 3.15, we are warned, do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness in the day of temptation. And and then in chapter 4 verse 7 of Hebrews, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So we must not allow ourselves to be offended or to harden our hearts. 
there is available grace. Because this could cause a person to turn from God. It could greatly hinder one's walk with God and ministry. It could destroy a person's health and bring terrible depression. It could even destroy one's relationships with people and especially marriage. You know, in Colossians 3 verse 9 it says, Husbands are commanded not to be bitter against their wives. Hardness of heart is to be offended over something. It could cause a person to choose another direction in life and lose some of their crown, or even worse, if it's never changed. Well, an example of this could be seen in the life of Barnabas. Now, Barnabas, we read in the book of Acts, was a very good man. In Acts 11, verse 24 and 25, it says he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and then it states, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. God actually used Barnabas to help Paul get into the ministry. But later, Barnabas was offended over something and went in another direction. Not backslidden, but just something second best. Well, in Acts 13, 2, it says the Holy Spirit joined Paul and Barnabas to work together in the ministry. In chapter 13, verse 5, John Mark, who was a nephew of Barnabas, joined them. But later, in verse 13, John Mark deserted them. So when we come to Acts 15... 36 to 40, Barnabas wanted John Mark to rejoin them on their missionary journeys again. In verse 38, Paul didn't think it was good at this time for John Mark to rejoin them, who had left them earlier. Well, in, in Acts 15, 39, the contention became so great that Barnabas left Paul and took his nephew on separate missionary journeys. Well, this is an important message here. Barnabas totally vanishes from the narrative of the book of Acts. He was offended with Paul. He chose another course and totally disappears from the book of Acts when his name should have been more and more in the word of God. Now it was no longer Paul and Barnabas. Now it's Paul and Silas from here on. Barnabas was offended. He chose another direction, another course. And I think Barnabas lost maybe some of his crown, part of his reward. He should have remained in the narrative of the book of Acts. But he chose another direction. Well, I believe God put this in his word to show us something. Many people do not totally finish their course in life because of an offense, taking another direction. In Revelation 3, verse 11, it warns, Hold fast to what you have, that no one else takes your crown. Silas replaced Barnabas in the narrative of the book of Acts. When Barnabas left Paul, so Silas replaced Barnabas in the narrative of Acts. Well, what a privilege to have your name in the Word of God, like Barnabas did. Barnabas should have remained all through the book of Acts. But Barnabas lost some of his crown, some of his reward, because he was offended over something. Now listen, he was a good man, but he lost some of his reward because he closed his heart to Paul. 
In Matthew 11, verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. In the Lord's parable of the sower and the seed, he's talking about different kinds of hearts. The seed is the word of God, but the ground that it falls upon represents the hearts of people. When we read Matthew 13, verse 20, 21. Let's read this. But he that received the word into stony places, the same as he who hears the word and immediately with joy receives it, yet hath he not any deep roots in himself, but endures just for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he is offended. Jesus warns in Matthew 24, verse 10, that in our times, when tribulation comes, many will be offended. And in verse 12, the love of many will turn cold. These are Christians. These are Christians who have hardened their hearts when they were hurt. Remember, grace is available when we're hurt. But we have a choice. We can harden our hearts and reject God's grace, or we can humble ourselves and receive grace in our times of need. Let's remember and even memorize Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when in time of need. Remember, grace is given only to the humble. God resists the proud, like it says in James 4, 6. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6. Well, let's look at Mark 6, verse 44 to 52. When the twelve apostles struggle with hardness of heart. Jesus had just fed 5,000 with just a handful of food. The food multiplied in the hands of the 12 apostles. What a miracle! But you know, just a few hours later, their hearts were hardened when there was a storm at sea. And Jesus came walking on the sea when he entered the ship, the wind stopped, it ceased. But in verse 52, this is very important. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Mark 6, 52. This is amazing. Just a few hours after seeing tremendous miracle of food multiplying, and feeding thousands of people. When a storm came, just a few hours later, their hearts were hardened. Do you see? There's a battle to keep hardness out of our hearts. Hardness can come immediately, like it did in the Twelve Apostles. We have to fight the good fight of faith. Why do people harden their hearts? Often, it's because someone hurt them. But hardening the heart is a form of false comfort. People harden themselves so that they won't be hurt again. It's a wrong defense, but it leads to bondage. When Joel was in his trial, he said this, in chapter 6, verse 10, that he would comfort himself by hardening himself in his sorrow. This is a wrong response. In Job chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, Job started out very well in his trial. His response was wonderful, but as time went on, he hardened himself some. One woman said this, 
It just feels so good to hate my husband after all he's done to me. But you know, this leads to bondage, to despair. When Paul wrote to the Hebrews, they had not been entering into rest. They were neglecting so great a salvation, as it says in chapter 2, verse 3. They were hardening their hearts, as it says in chapter 3, verse 8. And refusing him who was speaking from heaven, chapter 12, 25. In Psalm 95, verse 8 to 11, there's a warning not to harden our hearts like Israel did in the wilderness. Because of this, that first generation that came out of Egypt did not enter into the land of promise. Well, let's read it. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long I was grieved with this generation and said, As a people who do always err in their heart and have not known my ways, unto whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Read Psalm 95, verse 8 to 11. These attitudes of Israel in the wilderness are warnings to all of us, such as, why is God taking so long? Why doesn't God explain what he's doing? I don't like the way he's leading me. Why doesn't God provide better food and so forth? These were constantly, they were constantly challenging God and his leaders. But those who harden their hearts never get into the promises. Hardening the heart, rejecting grace, getting bitter. These things are all written for our learning not to make the same mistakes by God's grace. So again, Hebrews 4.16. Let us come to the throne of grace for help in time of need. This grace is given, though, only to humble people, not to the proud. People who harden their hearts are never blessed and don't enter into the promises of God. So by God's grace, let's keep bitterness out of our heart. Let's keep our hearts soft and filled with faith. A hard heart has no faith, but only bitterness. All these things were written for our learning so that we will not make the same mistakes, but only be tremendously blessed. God bless you.